awesome Asians live streaming your favorite games, survival genre of the fittest, and big giant adventures. Today on Main Game. Hello and welcome to another episode of Main Game, the show that puts the S in survival. I'm your host, Ifa Hazim. Wait, I thought the S stood for hope. I mean, I'm just goofing. Anyway, I'm your co-host, Lewis Larkin from Kakatu Prey, and today we've got quite a show for you. Live stream talents playing games for, uh, for a living online and in real time for all to see. Unfiltered, raw, and unedited gameplay, and the people behind the online-only shows, just hot stuff, really. That's right, and we also have some giant-sized games to recommend for the month of March, ranging from fantasy games to the remake, or should I say, rebirth of a long challenge franchise entry we covered last season. So let's not waste any time here, let's head on over to our first segment, Lowdown. Last episode, we've talked about VTubers and live streaming, but how about we go back a bit to where it all came from? You mean like just in TV? Okay, not that far back. I mean, when Twitch was created in 2011 as a gaming offshoot to just in TV, that clearly took off. I mean, of course, just look at how big the platform is today. Many people overseas are internet celebrities because of their dedication towards live streaming the game of expertise and passion on the platform of their choice. But is it a viable gaming career, especially here in Southeast Asia? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we're here to find out. We managed to speak with several experts on whether live streaming is a viable path in a gaming career. Let's check it out. These days, when you don't have enough time to play video games or do not have a specific console or platform to play a specific title, you can always turn to watching live streams. Game live streaming revolves around a person playing a video game online and in public and real time for all to see. It's easy to get going once you have the proper setup and have decided on a platform to do so, either Twitch.tv or YouTube or Facebook. But to stand out and make it a business? And to do it continuously with high risk and possible burnout? Well, that's a different story entirely. Ever since Twitch.tv got its start in 2011 as an offshoot of Justin TV, the platform got bigger and received more video game focused patrons and users over time. Because who wouldn't want to show off their gaming skills, or show off their brand of humor and sex appeal online, or just talk to people in real time while you are playing games or doing any other activity that's allowed on the platform's terms of service. The earliest names in Twitch.tv streaming include Summit 1G, Asmon Gold, Moist Critical, and Soda Poppin. These are but a few of the early streamers of Twitch.tv who got big from the platform via the games they were good at. Mass multiplayer online RPGs like World of Warcraft. Over time, more new names pop up in that period, taking over game genres due to their hard work, diligence, and hardcore knowledge of the subject matter. As such, live streaming as a career is viable, but really, really saturated. But don't take my word for it, here are a few awesome folks who have been in the trenches and lived to tell the tale about video game live streaming in Southeast Asia. So honestly, it is really difficult to make a living just purely streaming video games on Twitch. A lot of content creators I know diversify into other social media platforms or other types of jobs just so they can make ends meet. Honestly, it's not um, very easy, but it is very fulfilling. I think for a lot of people, when you want to go into streaming, the mindset shouldn't be trying to make it a career. Most people start off streaming because, like for me, I started streaming because I enjoy talking, or as the youngins say, yapping. For me, when I first started, I had a 3,500 ringgit PC, which wasn't the best. I had my headset mic and just a, a simple webcam that I got from Logitech back in the day. But if say that you are wanting to do it professionally, you're doing it in a for sort of like broadcast way. Say like you're like me and you do bedroom shoutcasting maybe. I think an average PC that can run a lot of stuff, maybe 6,000 and above for both your streaming and your video games. 
a mic I think it's a lot of like uh, Budget mics that are just as good Like say Maono It starts at 200 plus Might be even lower now A camera, webcam I think a normal webcam now I think you can get around 400, 300 So the entry level price for streaming Is not really that high anymore As to which platform is the best For live streaming in Southeast Asia? Twitch honestly is one of the best platforms you can go to if you want to start streaming video games specifically. Uh, just because there's a huge gaming community on Twitch compared to all of the other platforms, especially if you're looking towards uh, more of an international market outside of Malaysia. But if let's say you're looking to go a little bit more um, local, then Facebook is also a good option for Malaysia specifically. Let's not forget current gaming live streaming trends for the year. Watch parties is a trend that you can see in a lot of esports now where they have streamers watch the games with their viewers. How this works is that the streamer will put their face cam on the game that's happening in the background and this requires permission from the publications or the TOs themselves. So I think it's going to last for sure. If I would say what a watch party brings is definitely a safe space for the audience to chat, mingle and have their opinions heard. They can react with the streamer, they can banter with the streamer. So I don't see watch party going away anytime soon. As to whether it's a stable career, well... Don't quit your day job. First, you got to learn whether you like live streaming. That's the first most important thing. Some people just cannot handle it. It's overwhelming or they're too introverted and they just cannot uh, reach out to becoming... You, got, you get through this thing where there's imposter syndrome and you need to actually get to it, become the new person that you... You, you are as live streamer and it's difficult but it is possible if you're good you put in the effort you're consistent and you're willing to not be too serious about yourself and live streaming you must have the x factor most people don't have it they try they give it a go at least they give it a go and they find out that they're not good enough or they compare themselves to others or they don't have a plan so all these things can can be solved with time but you must have an X factor. People will throw tomatoes if they don't like you, you know, and others will shower you in gems if they love you. So you have to go through it. And a lot of people in the world cannot handle it. You have to be a little bit weird, different, and as I said, X factor. Now, that was a very insightful video about the trials and tribulations of video game live streaming. Yeah, we'd also like to thank all three of the live streamers, Natalie Tay of the Cham Drinkers, Goof Guy and Tash Bunny for imparting us with their knowledge. I honestly didn't think it was that much hard work. With all the equipment you have to get, the prep work. So if you have roughly 10k to blow on equipment with escalating costs to factor in, you should be set to go. Then comes the tough part, doing it consistently and sorting out a schedule. Tash Bunny mentioned that watch parties are a trending live streaming subject. So Louise, any other game genres came to mind that are, you know, actually popular? I mean, Goof Guy mentioned in, a, in the full interview, which you can check out on Kakuchou Pro's YouTube page, that first-person shooters are quite trendy right now. Tash Bunny also added that PC games are still trending here in Southeast Asia, at least in the live streaming community. And then Natalie Tay of the Cham Drinkers mentioned that it's a mixed bag between indie games, narrative games, and multiplayer games like Lethal Company and Among Us. Do you think our next game genre we're touching on later fits the live stream, live stream trend? Absolutely. And with that, we'll take a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll be touching on survival games and why they are fun to play and watch. See you in a minute. Welcome back on Main Game. Video game genres are getting more and more specific these days, combining a couple of them to form one brand new niche type of game that's fun to watch people get freaked out over. Here's a look at one of the most live streamed games out there that's part horror, part resource management, and part immersion the survival game genre. Picture this, you're stranded on a desert island, or green wasteland, or barren field. You're given a limited amount of time to set up your defenses before a horde of who knows what invade your space in the second half of the day. 
or you team up with other like-minded stragglers and stranded folks as you work together to build a place and make resources there, making weapons to survive the outer outdoors. That is the survival game genre in a nutshell. But how did it came to be? The history of survival games can be traced back to the early days of video gaming, but the genre gained significant popularity and recognition in the last decade. We've seen games like Unreal World created way back in 992 that shows the earliest concept of what survival games are now. In 2009, Minecraft is a game that popularized the survival game genre. Its open world sandbox environment cute blocky graphics, and emphasis on creativity and survival inspired a wave of similar games. From its 2011 official 1.0 release to its recent 2023 Trails and Tales update, Minecraft has lasted for quite a while and is still the de facto all-ages survival sandbox game. The early access version of DayZ, which is a post-apocalyptic action game back in 2013, also popularized the genre with its plethora of realistic mechanics and gameplay. And zombie killing, of course. Daisy officially came out in 2018 for PC, followed by the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions a year later. In between its early access days and launch, the game sold over 3 million copies for its realism and gameplay. In 2015, Ark Survival Evolved introduced a new concept of survival, this time surviving with dinosaurs. The inclusion of online multiplayer and being able to ride dinosaurs captivated a new audience as it added something unique to the genre. Ark Survival Evolved also reaped the benefits of being an early access game, with many people offering feedback to improve the title up until its 1.0 release in August 2017 for PC and consoles. It received criticism for its punishing difficulty and time-consuming activities, but these are the elements that made players flock onto it, dinosaurs and all. 2021 saw the release of Valheim, a co-op multiplayer survival game heavily inspired by Norse mythology in which players get to play as a Viking. From Minecraft to Valheim, and now we even have Fortnite LEGO. But why exactly? What is it about these games that captivates millions of players worldwide? At the heart of survival games lies the thrill of surviving whatever obstacle is thrown our way. Survival games provide an immersive experience, a sense of freedom as well as exploration, allowing players to step into a different reality. This allows players to step away from their daily lives and explore new, captivating landscapes make plenty of decisions, and shape their own narrative within the world. The escapism not only serves as a source of entertainment, but also contributes to mental well-being by providing a break from the stresses of daily life. It's pretty common nowadays for survival games to have a storyline that unfolds as the player progresses. Advancing the storyline will usually unlock new areas, events, and even new technology to contribute to your survival. Survival games also often feature procedurally generated environments, from day to night cycles, changing weather conditions, making every playthrough a unique experience. With these ever-changing circumstances, players have to learn to adapt and strategize for survival in this constantly shifting landscape. It also adds this layer of unpredictability, which keeps the game exciting and players on their feet. The sense of progression is also a key element to survival games, Players will have to gather resources and create weapons, tools, and even shelter. The constant need of survival keeps the players engaged. It also unlocks the creativity within players when it comes to base building. Many players use survival games for creating ingenious buildings, as you can see right here. The co-op or multiplayer feature in some games form a social aspect for some players. The camaraderie and teamwork involved in surviving together can be as rewarding as the survival itself. While the primary focus is usually a player versus environment survival situation, some games also include the player versus player element. Players can engage in combat with each other if they choose, adding an extra layer of challenge and competition. There is even a modding scene to contribute to the longevity of some of these survival games. The idea of player-made mods is to make more content that can either make quality of life improvements to the game 
or create more challenges and mechanics to keep the game fresh after its initial release. As developers continue to push the boundaries of this genre, who knows what kind of realistic and immersive experiences we can expect in the future. That was a very in-depth look at survival games. I'm gonna be honest, okay, Luis? These look way too hard for me to play. Well, they can be, and it's becoming more and more apparent that these ga this genre of games are popular among streamers and VTubers and do bring out the best in them as they provide loads of entertainment for all to watch. The tension, the difficulty, the fact that players will do what they can to, through any means to extend their current run, the adrenaline when you barely get out of a sticky situation by just a pixel or a single digit of health left, and getting screwed over by the hunger, bar, the hunger meter sorry, that's constantly debuffing you the lower it gets. Accounting for all those factors makes for a pretty fun live stream. Yikes, okay, I feel that this is similar to horror games in a way. The tenseness and dread that surrounds your playthrough just keeps you going and gets your blood flowing. Um, are there any survival games you played before, uh, Louise, or even quote-unquote enjoy? I'm not sure if it's technically counted these days, but No Man's Sky was definitely one of them. It's a survival game, but in space, with tons of randomly generated planets. You have resources to keep track for your survivability and space pirates to contend with. Albeit, it did have a rough launch, but it has gotten better over time. Just keep in mind that the makers of No Man's Sky Hello Games only consist of 26 full-time employees. Mm -hmm. So while overly ambitious, to see what they've achieved here in No Man's Sky from launch until now is nothing short of amazing. Okay, and that is survival games, ladies and gentlemen. Intense and best with friends, but probably not for everyone except for those who want to entertain at the expense of their dignity. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back with our last segment featuring jumbo-sized games of March. Welcome back, gamers. I think it's high time we talk about new games on the market, don't you think, Luis? You took the words right out of my mouth, but yes, it's about time. The month of March, and technically the tail end of February, is has been filled to the brim with AAA games worth the money and time. The big question is, can you handle all that content? Here's a quick segment on the hottest video games of the month. Take it away, Jonathan. As they say in the month of March, in like a lion, out like a lamb. When it comes to big games and juggernaut releases, you'll be getting the lion's share. These new titles will take up a lot of your time, especially if you want to kill time quick while fasting during the Ramadan month. Unicorn Overlord is the latest strategy role-playing game from developer Vanillaware. The game makers are well known for making really lovely artwork gorgeous sprites, and amazingly delicious food that'll make you forget you were playing a battle-heavy strategy title. You smell that? Delightful. Form your armies of choice, prioritize your behavior with appropriate commands, have them defeat enemies in a triangle system-like weakness mechanic, move them in real time to occupy forts, and uncover a dastardly plot while uniting the kingdoms around you. The gameplay and strategy elements will pique your interest if you're into automated style strategy combat similar to classic console titles like Ogre Battle. If you prefer a game of a more established fanbase and lore, you have Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This action RPG title from Square Enix continues the plot of Final Fantasy VII Remake where you have to hunt down the long-haired pretty boy named Sephiroth, hellbent on destroying the world our intrepid heroes are in. So off they go, fighting monsters and Shinra troops with anime-style moves and synergy attacks. Of course, Sephiroth seems pretty cool with our team taking this sweet time, because every region they stop in, from the forest scapes of Calm to the peaks of Cosmo Canyon, is filled with side quests and minigames galore. These include, but are limited to, Fall Guys but with frogs, racing with giant land birds named Chocobos, 
playing tag with white monster critters named Moogles, a highly addictive card game that has its own backstory and cutscenes like an actual main quest, and an escort mission featuring a dog, and one of your main characters questioning his role as a father figure. Fun fact, this game will take you 110 hours to platinum on the PlayStation 5. Rise of the Ronin is also a new open-world action RPG from Koei Tecmo, also a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Instead of a fantasy world, you explore 19th century Japan as a warrior for a group called the Veiled Edge. This means doing stealth missions, fighting tons of Ronin, Western soldiers and big giant folks, gliding, grapple hook from building to building, and rescuing cats from tall places. The open world and mission structure also means you can shape the multi-path storyline to unlock different outcomes. Finally, we have Dragon's Dogma 2, the long-awaited sequel to the 2012 fantasy role-playing game set in a grim fantasy world full of giant monsters and dragons. Pick different vocations with different fighting styles as you and your pawn explore a troubled world, complete multitudes of quests, and defeat aforementioned mythical beasts in fun team-based high-level action. After all, the game is from Devil May Cry 5 creator Hideaki Itsuno. And that is it for this month's major gaming offerings and recommendations. These console titles are sure to take up hours of your time. Whoa, those are monster-sized games we've recommended this month, Luis. Yes, they are. And I bet that most gamers who bought these titles that we suggested won't be completely done with them after the first two weeks. It's a testament to the titles as, they are, as there's a lot of content to be had. Whether you're an emo anime boy with a giant sword or a masterless samurai making a living in 19th century Japan, gliding and rescuing cats from tall buildings. As tall and as big as Osei Godzilla? You mean Academy Award-winning visual effect Godzilla? Yes, and that perfectly segues us to, into this con this episode's contest, where we get to choose where you get to choose who you'd rather side with: the titular radioactive lizard or the giant primordial ape. That's right. Our contest question of the week is: Are you ready? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> this is the question. Okay, you guys gonna see it on your screen. Okay, the question is. Are you Team Godzilla or are you Team Kong? I repeat another time for you guys. I repeat, are you Team Godzilla or are you Team Kong? Okay, so what you have to do is just make sure to pick a side and mention why you made your choice over on Kakuchopuri's Facebook post, which should go live later today. The best answers will win a prize listed on Facebook. That's K-A-K-U-C-H-O-P-U-R-E-I on Facebook. And with that, we have reached the end of our survival journey, at least for this week. We hope we've opened your eyes about the hard work involved with playing video games for the public and live streaming it for all to see. I'm your co-host, Lewis Larkham, imploring all of you to support your favorite local live streamers and or content creators. And I'm your host, Ifa Hazim. Thank you so much for joining us and may you get tons of bits and subs in your next live stream. Bye-bye.